Hey, my name is Max Taylor. I'm a full stack web developer from Dev CodeCamp. Today I'm going to show you the DMs Familiar, an application I made for creatives to help them build the amazing worlds that they can come up with. To do this, this application allows creatives to upload and create their stories, characters, and references here on this app in one place, where they can view it in a simple to use and clear interface. Now, the reason why I made the DMs Familiar is because during my time in digital media, a lot of my friends, colleagues, peers, drop entire settings because of how overwhelming it could all be when you start dealing with these massive worlds. Now when you get to the scope that some of these creatives get to, you can have entire journals full of stories, references, all over the place, and tons of characters. The DM familiar is here to help alleviate that and allow creatives to organize their thoughts easily and comfortably without all the stress normally involved. Now. To create this application, the technologies I used for my backend was Python for the language with Django and Django REST framework, as well as implementing Firebase with their authentication and Firestore real-time cloud database. Now for my front end, we went with the language JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, implementing React, React Router, Firebase OAuth authentication, Axios Bootstrap, and React Bootstrap. Now with all that being said, let's get right on into this. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and come over here and get started with our login screen. Now we're just going to assume that we are a new user. So we're going to go down here below our Google sign-in button and we're going to say we just need an account. So we're going to go ahead and click on sign up. It's going to bring us here. So we're just going to go ahead and fill out these three fields. So just something at something.com with a simple password, 1234, 1234. And we're just going to click sign up. Now we did just fail to create an account because we are actually using Firebase's authentication, which means we are having to follow some validation rules. So let's just go ahead and go back and put a real password in. And then I want to show you one other thing before we hit sign up. So we have something at something.com, which is a valid way of formatting an email. Now what happens if we just say something.com? So we're just going to delete that out. And we're going to come down here and we're going to try sign up it's going to yell at us saying, please include an at in the email address. So it's actually wanting us to format our email address properly. So we're going to come back in and just do something at something.com again. We're going to hit sign up. Now with this, it's going to bring us to our main page, which is usually our project list. However, since we are a new user, we actually don't have any projects made. So we're going to come up here to our top right, and we're going to click on new project, which will bring us to our project creation page. Now from here, we're gonna have a few options to go on and go through. So let's just go in and put a name. We're gonna say captain's log for the name of this project and just write a quick little summary. So just summary of the captain's log, simple as that. And we're creating this today. So let's just go and put that date in there. Now this is mainly for if you say had a project you created a couple months ago and you just wanna go ahead and put it in you can go and do that. Now, if you're some kind of time traveler, you can also go forward and put a future date. And below this, we can actually start picking our template for everything. So, for your story, do you have characters? Yes, we will have characters. Uh, documents, so yeah, we'll have like a few things like backstory, maybe a novel or something like that. References, so stuff like images, concept art, things like that. And yes, we will have locations. So we're just gonna click all of these. Now in future iterations, we will have like video and audio, as well as a way to upload your images. Now with all that being gone over, we're just gonna come over here and click our create project, which will bring us to our dashboard, which gives us our new uh, thing to kind of play around with. So when we look up here, we're gonna see our bookshelf and our character sheet over here. So this is where we're gonna start building out our world. So first things first is what we're gonna kind of look at is we're gonna go ahead and click on new book. So what's going to be our first thing? Let's just say a history of, because that's generally what you always start with. You start with like the backstory of everything, which that's exactly what we're going to call the category of this. And then we're just going to say the history of our ship. We'll go with that since we are doing the captain's log. I'm just going to go ahead and click submit. And there it is. There's our first book. And from this point, we need to kind of fill out this stuff. So this is just a book, it's no pages or anything like that yet. So let's just go and go over here and click on new chapter. So with new chapter clicked, it gets a very similar menu to how our new book was. So from here, we're just gonna put in our intro for the title, and we're just gonna say introduction to the history of. And from there, we just put anything in our body. This will be 
the body of our first chapter. Easy as that. I'm just going to go and click on Submit. And there you go, our first chapter. Now, a lot of times you may already have a whole bunch of Word documents and stuff like that already made for your um, old references and everything like that. So let's just go ahead and click on New Chapter. And we're just going to do a lot of the same thing. So this will be Chapter 2. So we're just going to title it just simple as that. The voyage begins. We'll go with that. And this will just be empty on this one because we're actually not going to be using this. So something that is really nice that's built into the application is you're going to be able to choose a Word document file directly from your computer or flash drive or anything else that you may have. And you're going to be able to load it right on in. Just like that. So we got our docx loaded in. And we're just going to go ahead and submit. And with that, it'll actually send it to our back end and convert the entire thing into a nice string for you. So you now have this loaded into your project. So those two things added, we can now go on over to our character sheet. So this character sheet is going to be very familiar to anyone who's ever played D&D. You're actually going to be able to go in and fill everything out exactly as that. So let's just go ahead and get, kind of get started with that. So let's go with Henry Smith. And let's see, Henry Smith sounds like a fighter to me, right? I want to say he is a human. Give him a sailor background. And we'll just start him off at level 2. And we'll give him a good alignment. And let's just go a step further and we'll say lawful good. And we'll go and we'll just kind of fill out his stats. Really easy. And the nice thing too of this is like you don't actually have to go off of a D20 system for anyone familiar with D&D. You can go off of a D100 system or you can put in your own numbers if you wish. It doesn't matter. Just whatever you want to use to kind of represent your character. And let's kind of fill all that in. And all this other stuff you can leave blank if you want to. Or you can fill it all out. That is entirely up to your choice. There is nothing on here that is actually explicitly required except for this block up here just for general background information. But we'll go ahead and click on a few of these just to kind of show you how it works. So now we have all those in there. Now the nice thing over here is you can now actually start really fleshing out your character. So if you want to, you can expand this out and really fill in all your traits and everything else. What are their ideals? Bonds, flaws, you name it. Everything you would need to know for your character. But for right now, we're just going to go and create this character as is. And it populates up here. Now as we create them, it will actually keep on going down the list for you to be able to actually select through them all. And with that being said, we're going to come back over here and we're actually going to create a new book specifically for Henry Smith. So I'm going to click on this and just title it Henry Smith on there so we know it belongs to him. I'm going to say this character documents. The documents and backstory for Henry Smith. I was going to hit submit just like so. So now we have this made. And we can kind of go ahead and do the same thing. We'll just start with, say, the backstory. And we'll just do a summary here backstory of Henry Smith. And instead of typing in here, we'll do the same thing. And we'll just go ahead and load in another one. And we're going to go ahead and load in another character of mine's Rorik's backstory right here. I'm just going to go ahead and submit. And boom. You now have a whole nother chapter in your character thing. Now, once you have all this done, what if you want to just kind of focus on one thing or the other? So I really wanted to make this part really intuitive for whoever's using this. Because as you can kind of see, this can get really busy really quick. So say if we just want to focus on our character sheets. All we got to do is come over here and click on documents here and that goes away and this moves into the center and now all you got is your character sheet. Same thing, we can just click on that, bring it back and click off the character sheet and now all you have is this and you just focus on this and this alone. Same thing when you work with the references and locations, all you can have as much on the screen as you want or as little on the screen as you want, it will dynamically populate for you. So now from here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you what it would look like for a user who's been using this for a little while. So we're just going to go ahead and click log out. And we're going to go here to Google account. So like I said, we are using Firebase's authentication, specifically their OAuth authentication. 
which means we can actually log in with a Google provider. So I'm just gonna click on that and it's gonna bring you to my account. Now from here, you can kind of see I got three different projects already made. We got the Halfling's Tale, Captain's Log, and Durston Campaign. So from here, I don't really need Halfling's Tale anymore. It's kind of an abandoned project. So I'm just gonna go in over here and just click on delete. And as you can kind of see, that project is already gone. And now it has dynamically loaded these back in a new order. So let's just go ahead and hop into the Durston campaign. And as you can kind of see, we're right back where we are on here. We got our multiple stories for our chapters and we got our multiple characters. So like we can have Jane Ann here, Henry over here, and Rora Griorstead right here with everything all nice and filled out already for you. And if we wanted to, we can actually change any of this information and we can just hit update characters. So let's just go ahead and show proof of concept on this. So we're just gonna change his background to mage, something really simple. Just hit update. And now he is just that, a mage. So we're gonna load up Henry, okay. And we're gonna go back to Rorik. And as you can kind of see, that has nice and updated. Now, these are just some of the features that we have right now. Within in future iterations, I really want to expand this to where you can have all the concept art, all the images, video, soundtracks for your worlds, and have all that starting to build together and populate on this uh, project. So with each iteration, I want to add more and more content for the creators to be able to add in, and also add more features for them to be able to actually create and move around this entire workspace so they can have a great experience by the end of it. And now, with all that being said, I do want to thank y'all for sticking through with me through this entire presentation. And I would love for you to be able to reach out to me. I'll have my email down below or attached uh, somewhere on this page for you to be able to send me a question. If you have any questions regarding this. And I do really look forward to hearing from you soon.